Good morning. Welcome to House of God and Gate of Heaven Church. We're so happy that you decided to join us this morning. I am in expectancy and I'm excited for what God has in store for us this morning. I want you guys to engage in the worship today. We're going to we're going to give God the highest and the greatest praise. Amen. Because he deserves it. Or did that sound like a little like, amen? Come on, come alive, people. Amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. Let's do this. Thank you. 
I got to jump, dance. I hope you guys received. And man, I, I love it. We're not in the gospel barn today, but we're in God's another place. We, we don't need to be in a place. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And, and I know and I know for a fact that God is going to speak here today. He's, he's already moving. And I hope he's moving in your house. I hope that you have invited him. You know, you have said, Lord, you know, come into my house, come into wherever you are. You could be driving in the car. You could be anywhere and you could invite the Holy Spirit to come into your life and move. And, and we're doing this for the Lord. We don't come here every Sunday just because, just because. No, no, we come here every Sunday because God has called us to do so. Amen. This is House of God and Gate to Heaven Church. I thank all those that invest into this ministry. This is not no, you know, little, you know, thing that I invented. No, I didn't invent this. God invented this. God called me to do this. And that's what I'm doing, me and my family. And, and we're here to, to bless you today. And I pray that you have a blessing today. Today, um, I have something special for you guys. That same woman that came up here and brought that worship, she's going to bring a word today. So I, I be ready, you know, hang on to your seat because this little girl of mine is fire. So Rachel, come up and bring something for us today. Woo! Woo! <laughs> amen, amen. I am so happy mm. to be here. And very nervous, honestly. Um, but you know, it is an honor to be able to come here. I remember when Dad was like, "Oh, you're preaching." I was like, like the wind came out of me. I was like, "Whoa!" I wasn't ready for that one. But God knows. And I want to honor my pastors, Pastor Eddie and Pastor Raquel, because they have been a very blessing in my life. You know, their dedication, their loyalty to God, and inspiring myself and and my family and, and people around me that are so close to me to pursue the things of the Lord. And it's not easy. Everybody thinks it's easy, but it's not. And I just want to honor them for being such a blessing. Amen. Amen. Um, it's crazy because I didn't know what to bring for the word, but God kind of like like made it clear to me in prayer what it was that I needed to bring and I come here humbly I don't come here thinking that you know that I'm holier than thou or that I haven't experienced anything and I haven't been through my own trials I come here because I am preaching out of the overflow of what God has done in my life so I want to encourage you that this this word that has been in my heart will will touch your life and and it would bless you because this is I think a, a very important message um, it's life changing and I pray that you guys would receive it and and be blessed by it amen, amen. hallelujah so I know I'm just going to do a quick prayer and I'm going to invite the Lord to come and do as he needs to do. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for this moment, God. I come here humbly, Lord, and I ask you, Lord Jesus, that every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord, would not be on my own, Father God, but it would be you through me, Jesus. I pray, Father God, that there would be... Um, that your Holy Spirit would be in this place and that your, your presence would be so tangible, Father God, that those who are watching and those who are present here at this moment, Father God, will be blessed and impacted and, and motivated and changed, Father God. And, and I just pray, Lord, that 
that this message, Father God, it will, it will come with power and authority, Lord, to break the chains. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Quickly, let me fix this. Okay. So today, what I want to speak about is something that is very important, and I want to tell, I want you to tell your neighbor purpose. Purpose. Whoever's purpose. sitting next to you, say to them, purpose. 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 This is what I'm going to be speaking about today because it's something that <laughs> is powerful. So let's, let's look into what the meaning of purpose is, right? So I went to the dictionary and I did some basic definitions and it says, the first definition, what purpose means. The reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. The second definition, the reason something exists, an intended aim, goal, or end. So purpose is, is the reason for why something is here. There's, there's no, when, when people talk about purpose, there's a reason behind it. It's not just existing for no reason. And if we look at creation, all the created things, if we look at the, the plants, the animals, the insects, the, organi the organisms, weather, landscape, the moon, the planets, the stars, whatever is here, they work together to form a bubble of life. They have purpose. They're not just here for no reason. Think about it. I mean, even a fly has a purpose. As, no as annoying as it is, it has a purpose. <laughs> So if we think about it, or whether we are aware of it or not, there is not a single thing that exists without having a purpose for its existence. So this is why I think atheism will always be invalid, because no matter how much you want to make it work, all of creation screams that there indeed is a God and a higher power that orchestrated everything in such precision that we see his perfection in created things. I mean, if you even look at the way your hands, the way that your body works, it's, it's there, everything has a purpose. My, my, my eyebrows have a purpose, my fingers have a purpose. Everything that we see has a purpose. So, let's say, well, you know, well, there's people who discover things that they don't really know what, what, what their existence means. Well, let me just tell you, if we don't know what it means and if it seems pointless or meaningless, if we find, stumble into something that we have never been aware of, it's because we, we don't know its purposes. In other words, everything that God has designed and created that we see has a purpose. Doesn't matter how, how, um, how small, how big, how whatever, it, there has a purpose, amen? Mm -hmm. So to say all of that is to say that God never makes a mistake. So everything that he calls forth into existence, it's there because he has a purpose for it, because he has a plan for it. He didn't just say, oh, let there be light because, you know, nobody's going to need it. He had a purpose behind it. So purpose is a powerful force. It's a, it's a, it's a gift from God because God, in all of his, his knowledge, in all of his might, in all of his power, he knew that whatever he called forth into existence has a purpose for his plan. And to say all of that is for us to know that we too have a special purpose. I believe that there is a severe crisis in our world today because people are lacking purpose. And, you know, I find I f like people don't know why they're here. They, they just do whatever they do with their life, you know, and, and they just they're just not feeling like they have a purpose. And maybe we have goals, maybe we have dreams, but but at the end of the day, there's not that living drive inside of us. Like, I know why I'm here. So. To say all that, I see, I, I feel like everybody longs to know what their purpose is. Because deep down inside, there is a longing in each and every one of us to satisfy that need of fulfillment. And that can only be satisfied by living a life of purpose. You know, if you look around, there's, there's an emptiness, a deep sadness when you, when you live a life without purpose. And I'm not talking about like, you know, well, 
you know, I, my purpose here is to get a car, to get a nice house, to have like three kids, five kids, and you know, live in the American dream or whatever your idea of purpose is. I'm not talking about that because once that goal is achieved and once that dream is dreamt, then what? And I want to say, like, yeah, I was thinking when I was thinking about, okay, purpose, you know, we look at creation and you see a bird and nobody has to tell the bird, hey, you have to be a bird, okay, you have to, like, do this, you know, <laughs> fly like a bird, eat like a bird, sing like a bird. Nobody does that. Nobody, you know, gets into their business for them to be a bird. It's, they already know. They already know what God intended them to be. And nobody tells a seed, hey, look, you're going to be this, this. So make sure that you become it. No, it already knows its purpose and it lives within the personal design given to them by God. And <laughs> yet you look at humans and no, not many people know what their purpose is. So it's like you see us, we're like, we, we're, we're just, and, and the more that life continues, we're seeing more and more how confused we are becoming twisting the nature and the the natural design that god has given us we can see how the human race is trying to tell god hey look this is how it is trying to pervert the way of life trying to reconstruct the definition of what it means to be a man or a woman trying to distort the truth and the reality of things into the ways that we want them to be rather than what they really are this is why the lord gave us the bible because without the Bible, we would not know what is right and what is wrong. He gave this to us as a guide. So like that, there's no excuse for not knowing. Oh, I didn't know. This is why this is so powerful. Because this is life. This gives us purpose. Hallelujah. And I believe all of this comes because we we're losing our sense of purpose and, and identity and we no longer want to live within the walls that God, the laws that God had created for us and designed for us. When, when God says, hey, do not, don't kill your neighbor, honor your parents, don't steal, don't kill. These are there because he wants us to thrive. This is part of his plan and his purpose for our lives. This is not an option. It's for our own good. And you know, it's so sad and it's heartbreaking because you know, there's so many, out, so many people out there who are destroying their lives because they want to experience a taste of purpose, a taste of, of, of meaning, of belonging. Like, like, why am I here? Whether we say it or not, we are looking for something to feel alive. And how do I know this? Because I have struggled with purpose. So I can't, I can't come and say, oh, people, people, people. I'm saying this because I lived it. I've lived my life in a place in my life where I had no purpose at all. I was living the way that I thought was good. I was living the way that was gratifying my own fleshly desires. And as much as I felt so good and so like happy, I was miserable because I was not living in my purpose. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Has you, have you ever been in a place in your life where you are not in your purpose and it doesn't matter how successful, how, 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 how good it is, at the end of the day, you go to sleep alone and crying because you have no purpose. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So Jeremiah 1.5 says, this is a beautiful, this is for you, okay? This is for all of you. Before I formed you in the womb, this is God speaking. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Hallelujah. And then there's another ver version in the message that says, Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. Hallelujah. Ooh. Isn't that something? Like, I know you know for all the church people this is something that we hear all the time but that is a powerful thing because that's to show you you have a purpose Amen. that before you were even thought of <laughs> he already knew about you because he had a purpose for you so i don't know what it is but somebody needs to hear this you are not a mistake you are not an accident you didn't just pop and saw the light of day because you just happened to be here. No, you were already predestined. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Mm 
So whatever the enemy wants to tell you that you're here just by chance, you're here just to live whatever life you want to live and destroy your life with, with sin and, 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 and feeling hopeless and depressed and, and bound and crippled, let me tell you, wake up because today is a day where we are going to step into our purpose. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen. Hallelujah. God knows the plans that he has for you. Even if you don't know the plans that he has for you. If you keep reading verse 12 through 13 of Jeremiah 29, it says, Then you will call on me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. And when you search for me with all of your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. All that to say that if you do not know what your purpose is, if you call upon the Lord, and if you seek him with not just a little part of your heart, not, you know, here, he's my leftovers, God. No, God, I am here. You will, he will find you, and you will find him. And when you find him, you find your purpose. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Ah. It's so crazy because it's like you would think that the church people will have, you know, an understanding of this. But if, believe it or not, there is a lot of people in the church that are not even walking in their purpose. It's possible to attend church actually on a consistent basis and still not know him or his thoughts or his plans for you. This is why it's so important to, to, to really get to, to the Lord because he will, he will show you what you're here for. Amen. Let me tell you, if you are breathing, if your heart is beating, if you wake up to a new day, if your eyes open at the, that, at the light of day, let me tell you, you have a purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you know that the enemy also has a purpose for you? Because it's not only God that has a purpose for you. The enemy has a purpose for you. He's, his plans are to kill, steal, and destroy. And the, the crazy thing is that the enemy will act as your friend mm -hmm. because he can get you what you want. But not always what you want is what you need. Hallelujah. Mm, powerful. The enemy has a purpose for you. His plan is to stop God's purpose in your life from coming to fruition. That is why if he can kill you and take you out prematurely, <laughs> he can kill the purpose that God has placed in you that only you can do. That's why some of you that are sitting here and or some of you that are watching online have survived a horrific accident like that. And, and there's people that have survived childhood traumas and people have, that have gone into situations that they should have came out with a mental illness because of all the emotional and, 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 and physical damage. But <laughs> God has a purpose. Amen? Amen. The enemy can give you and will give you any desire that is under his worldly command. If, if you desire the world, he can give it to you because he is the prince of this world. Just to take you out of your purpose. Mm -hmm. He knows that God has a plan and a purpose assigned to you. And, he has, and that purpose that is inside of you has the power to threaten his kingdom. Amen. He is not on your side. Do not be fooled. If he can get you to destroy yourself through alcoholic addiction, through pills, through drugs, overdose, sleeping around and catching disease, lust, greed of money, power and fame, reckless living, reckless choices, perversion, hate, suicidal tendencies, pick your choice of poison. He wants to take you out and whatever desires you struggle with, he is going to grant them to you so like that you can be out because he doesn't want to see God's beautiful plan in your life come about this is a serious thing because a lot of times we have become so um numb to the fact that we have a plan we have a plan in our lives and we think that our plan and purpose for our life is to wake up is to go to work and is to come back home spend time with the family go to sleep and do it all over again and as much as that is part of life it is not purpose Hallelujah. And, and maybe you will, well, Rachel, well, I'm not doing anything crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, 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 you know, attending church. I, I'm with my crew. You know, we're doing good things up in here. And God is like saying, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Because 
The enemy wants to even waste. If he can't get you through sin, he can get you through distractions. Because if he can distract you, you will have the, the, the sad story of not ever getting into close proximity to your purpose calling for your life. You can be so close to your purpose, but because you're so distracted, you are delaying the, 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 the divine purpose in your life because the enemy just want to be like, hey, hey, look at this. Waste your time on this. Waste your time on that. Waste on your time with these people who are not doing any, any good for you. Waste your time watching the TV for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and not have the time to seek the Lord. Distraction, people, is a real thing. If the enemy can't get you with a bottle of alcohol, if he can't get you with, with, with perversion and hate and, and lust and all this junk that's flying around, well, he can get you through distractions. If he can distract you, he can, he can rip out the purpose out of your life without you even knowing it. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Is, am I making sense? Amen. Yes. It's very important that we... We, we are in our purpose because <laughs> I don't know about you, but all, if anybody here can relate all those times that we have not been in our purpose, you, whenever you're not in your purpose, you find yourself at the wrong place, at the wrong time, with the wrong people, wrong timing, wrong agenda, wrong everything. And then you just find yourself having to deal with the consequences of not being where you need to be. Uh -huh. Can somebody relate to that? Because that is truth. <laughs> That is truth. True. You think just because you're not doing great things, if you're not walking in your purpose, you're going to be totally not where you're supposed to be. And I'm not saying that, oh, well, you know, while well, God, everything is going to be, woo, smooth sails, and, and everything is going to be great, and you're not going to deal with any hardship or trials and stuff. But let me tell you, those trials are very different. Because those trials that you face, while in purpose, those trials are there to, to strengthen you and you have the God's grace behind you, before you, to get through those trials. But now troubles that come as a result of not being in your purpose will cause us pain, heartache, mental, emotional, physical damage because God's grace was never with you in the first place. Amen. That's why walking in purpose is so, so important. And that's why we see so much hurt, so much pain, so much anguish, so much so much things happening in our world because there's so many people doing great things but not in their purpose. Yeah. Hallelujah. They're, they're, the enemy's desire is to, to, to pervert the purpose of God to his, his evil and dark purpose. And I want you guys to get a grip on what purpose is and, 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 and why it's so important. We're going to look at a, the story in the Bible that is going to um, tie into this message. So if you have your Bibles out, please turn to Judges chapter 6. We will be reading about the story of Gideon. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you guys to pay attention. I know that the, the attention span of humans nowadays is like, you go off into another world, please, this is a good story. Do not miss your blessing. This is a great story, so pay attention, okay? Then the people of Israel began once again to worship other gods. So to get a clear um, understanding of what's happening here is that there have been judges that have come to guide the people to righteousness but nobody really to rule them so they have like these ups and downs where yes yes they're doing good for God and and then all of a sudden they 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 don't do the things that God wants them to do so this is one of the cases then the people of Israel began once again to worship other gods and once again the Lord let their enemies harass them this time it was by the people of Midian for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the, Isra the Israelis took to the mountains, living in caves and dens. When they planted their seed, martyrs from Midian, Amalek, and other neighboring nations came and destroyed their crops and plundered their countryside as far away as Gaza, leaving nothing to eat and taking all their sheep, oxen, and donkeys. These enemies' hordes arrived on droves of camels too numerous to count and stayed until the land was completely stripped and devastated. 
So what happened here is because the, the, the Israelites decided to do their own thing and to live off of their, their rightful purpose, the, the enemies, which in this case are the Midianites, came and completely stripped them of everything that they have. And you can see that, that there are many of them. So Israel was reduced to abject poverty because of the Midianites. Then at last the people of Israel began to cry out to the Lord for help. However, the Lord's reply to the prophet he sent to them was this. Listen. The Lord God of Israel brought you out of slavery in Egypt, and he rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who were cruel to you and drove out your enemies from before you and gave you their land. He told you that he is your Lord, your God, and that you must not worship the gods of the Amorites who live around on, on every side. But you have not listened to them. So basically what the Lord is saying, look, you're crying out to me, but I, I, I saved you already. You know this. You know this. My desire for you is to prosper you, to bless you, to, to take you out of your slavery. And the reason why all of this is happening is because you have rejected me, because you have rejected my plans for you, because you have rejected the purpose that I have intended for you. Okay, so let's continue. Verse 11. But one day, okay, listen, this is, this is, this is the beginning of where I want to get to. But one day, the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the oak. The oak tree at Ophrah, on the farm of Joash the Abizarite. Joash's son, son, Gideon, had been threshing wheat by hand in the bottom of a grape press, a pit where grapes were pressed to make wine, for he was hiding from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty soldier, the Lord is with you. So that, let's pause there. And, and discuss what's happening. So this guy, Gideon, he's minding his own business. Actually, he's hiding because he's, he's doing his thing, but he's at the bottom of a grape pit doing the whole wheat thing and the threshing of the wheat. But he has to hide because the, the Midianites are, if they see him, you know, bad news, right? So an angel comes to him and says, mighty soldier, the Lord is with you. And immediately Gideon is like, come again? Uh, no. And you know what struck me when I read that? Is that when the Lord saw him, he did not see him how he viewed himself or his current state. He saw him how he determined and purposed for Gideon to be. And what I want to tell you right now before I continue is that some of you guys, God is saying, look, man of God, worshiper who will sing and worship God before the multitude, preacher who will set the, the captives free, Prophetess who will give the word unashamed, you know, whatever you are, uh, uh, author of many books, whatever you are, God is saying to you, purpose, purpose, and regardless of how you feel or your current situation, does not matter because when you have purpose, God says, I'm not seeing you, I'm not seeing you how you see yourself right now or your situation. I said that you are mighty, not because of how you think you're mighty, but because if, if you let me inside of you, oh, let me tell you, if you can get into your purpose, Amen. that's a game changer. Amen? Amen. So let us continue. So he goes, mighty soldier, the Lord is with you. And Gideon's like, stranger, replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened to us? Listen, and, and where are all the miracles, huh? Where are all the miracles our ancestors have told us about, such as when God brought them out of Egypt. Now the Lord has thrown us away and let the Midianites completely ruin us. Who can relate to that? Who can relate to that? Where's God, huh? Where's God in my situation? I don't see no heaven on earth oh, coming out from my ceiling when I'm praying to him. Where's God? Where, where's, where's all the miracles and signs and wonders that my, my parents keep saying about? Oh, God saved me. God did this. God did that. Where were all the miracles and the signs and the wonders and, and God's, where's, where's his presence? Come on, church. Because a lot of times you have a lot of people coming into church and they cannot even find the presence of God. Where is God? Gideon is saying, where's the God? Where's the God who, who opened the sea? Where's the God who, who, who said, come out of bondage? Where is he? Because I can't find him. Who can relate to that? Amen. Where is God? See? 
God was not present because the disobedience and the rebellion of the people. So we see a lot of rebellion in this age, unfortunately. And because of that, we have seen that the presence of God decline. So when we disobey the Lord and do whatever feels right in our eyes, like the Israelites in this story, we shut down the supernatural presence of God from manifesting in our lives. So where is God? Gideon is saying, I don't know what you're talking about because if God was here, things would be different. And the Lord turned to him and said, look, I will make you strong. Go, go and save Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. The Lord is saying, I am sending you. I am sending you because I have a purpose. But Gideon replied, sir, how can I save Israel? My, my family is the poorest in the whole tribe of Manasseh and I'm the least thought of in the entire family. Hallelujah. <laughs> Gee, that right there, I don't even have to say that. There is a preaching in your head that said what I was about to say right now because <laughs> it was so clear that sometimes when God says, look, like he said to me, you're going to be a, a worshiper, you're going to sing, you're going you're gonna to preach. And I'm like, me? Ah, my English is not even all that. You know, ghetto comes out of me like a lot of times and, and, and ruins my professionalism. You know what I mean? Me? 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 I, I don't come from, from a, a super wealthy family. Like, 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 what is your excuse? Okay, because we all have excuse. When God is saying, look, I am sending you. And, and Gideon is saying, look. I'm, I'm poor, I, I'm the weakest, I'm the least thought of. Look, let me tell you something, child of God. If you are feeling discouraged about what God said about you or where he wants to take you, it doesn't matter where you come from, your nationality, the country that you were born, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, your, your intellect, your vocabulary. When God says, I am sending you, God is gonna put his spirit in you to accomplish his divine purpose. So let me tell you, don't give God excuses of why you are not able, because if you submit yourself to God, he can take your ordinary self and do extraordinary things because of your divine obedience to his divine purpose. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. So, he was giving excuses, like, which was legit in his brain, you know, like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. And whereupon the Lord said to him, but I, Jehovah, Jesus, will be with you and you shall quickly destroy the Midianites. Amen. He didn't say it'll take Maybe one year, maybe, or, or he, no, 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 maybe um, it will take a, a few while. No, he said quickly, quickly, As the, the minute that you obey is the minute that God go, goes to work. That's right. So don't think that, 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 that your purpose, when you say, God, I'm ready to walk into your purpose, <laughs> the minute that you walk is the minute that he's working, quickly. Gideon replied, if it really is true that you are going to help me like that, then do some miracle to prove it. <laughs> How many are uh, like that with God? When God says something, like, um, prove it, please, because my faith is a little not too good right now. <laughs> so he's like, do some miracle to prove it. Prove that it's really Jehovah who is talking to me. But stay here until I go and get a present for you, okay? So the angel agreed, all right, I'll stay here until you return. So Gideon hurried home and roasted a young goat and baked some unleavened bread from a bushel of flour. Then carrying the meat in a basket and broth in a pot, he took it out to the angel who was beneath that oak tree and presented it to him. Now, when I was reading this, I was like, man, that angel must have been patient because he went ahead and roasted a whole goat, <laughs> baked unleavened bread. And this other the other translation I was reading from said, oh, like a whole lot, like saying that it was a lot. So I was like, that angel must have been there like for a long time. <laughs> So anyways, the angel said to him, place the meat and the bread upon the rock over there and pour the broth over it. So when Gideon had followed the instructions, the angel touched the meat and bread with his staff and fire flamed up from the rock and consumed them. And suddenly the angel was gone. So when Gideon realized that it had been indeed the angel of the Lord, he cried out, oh, Lord God, for I have seen the angel of God face to face. Jesus. <laughs> Let me tell you, sometimes we can be right there. God is ministering. We can be face to face with God and not really realize it until, boom, it happens. So it's, it's all right. The Lord replied, don't be afraid because back then 
um, according to the Old Testament, if you were to see the face of God, you were going to die. Okay? That's just how it was. You know, he's too holy, you're, you're, that's it. But the Lord was reassuring him, no, 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 don't be afraid. You shall not die. Let me tell you, if you have a purpose, it doesn't matter how, how it looks like. You cannot die, okay? <laughs> he has a plan for you. Amen. So, and Gideon built an altar there and named it the Altar of Peace with Jehovah. And that altar is still there in Ophrah in the land of the Abizarites. That night, the Lord told Gideon to hitch his, farm, his father's best ox to the family altar of Baal and put it down and to cut down the wooden idol of the goddess Asherah that stood nearby. So, if we read here, if you didn't understand what was I said here, basically the Lord had told Gideon, look, take down the wooden idol and because, you know, all these people, is, and if you read in the beginning, they started to turn into other idols. They were no lo longer worshiping the, the one true God. So they had all these idols to the, the what is it called? The, the goddess Asherah. And the Lord told him, tear it down. Verse 26, replace it with an altar for the Lord your God, built here on this hill, laying the stones carefully. Then sacrifice the ox as a burnt offering to the Lord, using the wooden idol as wood for the fire of the altar. Pay attention. Because when you have, when you, in order to walk into your purpose, you have to destroy everything that has taken the place of God in your life. And you must die to self. God could have said, oh, go ahead, defeat them. No, he said, before you defeat them, go destroy the idol. And God is, destructing, is instructing us today, if you want to walk in my power and my authority and your purpose that I have planned for you, you need to destroy all the idols. And it says, not only that, use the wooden idol as wood for the fire of the altar that he had to replace. So it's not only destroying the idols, you need to say, Goodbye, and also burn them and then replace it with God as your rightful savior and king of your life. Amen? Amen. You cannot expect God's purpose to be great and grand in your life and walk in power and authority when you still have idols and things that are taking his place. Because all that is saying is that, that my heart is not 100% loyal to you. I don't trust you. An idol is something that you depend on as a crutch because you don't have the capacity to serve God as, as he is one. Right. We need to get out from our comfort zone. We need to get out from every idol. I don't care what it is. I have my idols. You have your idols, but some things have to go. If God wants to move in this, in your life, in your family, you need to say, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. There ain't going to be no idol in my house that is going to take place and that is going to kill the purpose that I need to birth out in this time and season of my life. Jesus. So Gideon took 10 of his servants and did as the Lord had commanded him. So he went in the night because he was fearful, it says, of the other members of his father's household for fear of the men of the city because he knew what would happen if they found out who did it, who, who took down the idol of our, you know, this is serious. So earlier, early the next morning as the city began to stir, Someone discovered that the altar of Baal was not to part and the idol beside it was gone and a new altar had been built instead and with the remains of a sacrifice on it. And, and everybody flipped out. Who did this? Oh my gosh. Finally, they learned that it was Gideon, the son of Joash. Bring out your son, they shouted to Joash. He must die for insulting the altar of Baal and for cutting down the Asherah pole. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen right now. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Those who walk in their purpose, not only do they have to tear down their idols, 
but they had to endure all the people talking junk because they stood up for their God. Let me tell you, do not be discouraged when somebody starts saying, oh, look at you. Oh, look at this. Oh, you're too holy. You're too sanctified. Look at you thinking that you're better, enough, better than us because you're walking in purpose. Let me tell you, rip it down and let them say what they say because I have a God who's, who's before me and behind me to the left and to my right so you can talk all you want to talk, but I'm walking in purpose. I'm walking in purpose and there is no devil, no, no idol, no, no custom, no tradition, no nothing that's going to get in that way. Who's going to stop me? Nobody. Because if the Lord is for me, who can be against me? So let the people talk. Let the people ridicule you for being a goody good girl and a good boy. Let me tell you, it is it is so rewarding to know that you are walking in your purpose. So let me tell you, what does Jesus say? Consider it joy. Be happy when people are start talking about you and stop putting you to the girl, to the to the dirt. People could be talking about me. Oh, look at her. She's she's jumping and acting all crazy. Let me tell you, I'm walking in purpose. I don't know about you. And I don't care what you have to say about me because I know where I was and where he took me out of. And if he did that for me, there's nothing that nobody can say that can stop me from doing what. I need to do. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, the enemy is always gonna bring that family member to bring you down and start belittling, belittling you. That there's gonna be that 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 um that student in your college and your your high school. Oh, look at her. Look at him. Oh my God. There's always gonna be that that annoying person that comes out as an assignment from the enemy to try to discourage you from doing what you know you need to do. And I come to, to encourage you, do not give up. I Use it as ammunition. Use it as a fuel. What, what, did, what, did, what did Gideon do? He used the idol as fuel. Use whatever that is trying to, to bring you down to as fuel to push you right into your purpose. If people are talking about me, I'm going to use that as fuel because that means I'm getting somewhere. If people are getting nervous because I'm walking in my path, Y'all ain't hear me today. Ah. Oh, that Be glad when people start talking about you. Be glad when they want to start talking behind your back. Oh, let us kill him. Let us kill him. Who did this? Who did this? But Joash, the dad of Gideon, retorted to the whole mob. Look, look, look. Does Baal need your help? What an insult to a god. You are the ones that should die for insulting Baal. If Baal is really a god, let him take care of himself and destroy the one who broke apart his altar. Shaya. Let me tell you something. That the very thing that people put so much power on, whether it's their words, whether it's their, their, their remarks to you, Harabashaya, let them say what they say. Because if, they're, if, they're, if those, those words and those intentions and that, that assignment of the enemy has more power than God, it cannot prosper because it doesn't have more power than God. So let me tell you right now, get that out of your head, thinking that anything that can just come up my way can, can defeat me. Because if God is with me, Baal cannot, cannot prosper. Amen? Amen. So from then on, Gideon was called Jerubbabel, a nickname meaning let Baal take care of himself. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, let Baal take care of himself. Let everything that, that, that has tried to come your way take care of itself. Because now that you're in God's territory, everything that, that comes from the, the darkness cannot cross, cannot hinder what God has placed in your life. Let them take care of themselves. Let the enemy take care of himself. Let him take out his strategies. Take care of yourself because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm talking to somebody who is feeling discouraged right now, so who is feeling threatened. Oh, I'm, I'm starting to pray, but as soon as I start to pray, I can't even concentrate. I feel like my prayers are not even are legit or, or, or real or, or sincere because I can't keep my head. As soon as I start to open my Bible, the phone rings and, and people start coming to want to talk to me. Let them take care of themselves. Do what you got to do and don't be afraid to do it because if God told you to do it, he will give you the grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us keep reading. Soon afterwards, the army of Midian... Amalek and other neighboring nations united in one vast allegiance against Israel. Ooh, it's about to get real. 
<laughs> not only Midian, but they joined forces with other neighboring nations. Hallelujah. When you start walking in your purpose, don't expect for everything to go away. The enemy gets so pissed off that he goes and, and, and brings joins forces with other things to come against you. But let me tell you, do not be afraid because God actually gets more glory out of that. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm about to like, I need to stay, stick to what I'm reading here. So they have the neighboring nations coming together against Israel. They crossed the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet as call to arms. And the men of Ebezer came to him. And he also sent messengers throughout Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, summoning their fighting forces and all of them to respond. So what was happening here is Gideon is saying, Look, it's about to get real. Come on, all the tribes, let's come together. We're going to go into war. So then Gideon said to God, Look, if you really are going to use me and save Israel as you promised, prove it to me in this way, and, and, and I'll, uh, I'll put some wool on the threshing floor tonight, and if in the morning the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, I will know that you're going to help. And it's so, easily, it's so easy to judge Gideon like, Bro, didn't you get it the first time when the angel did a miracle on the rock and the flame? But no, <laughs> he has a reason because now he's not just dealing with Midian. He's dealing with Midian and all the other people and all the enemies that joined forces. So now he needs some kind of, some kind of assurance. How many of us have dealt some, with something that was more than we could handle? And you, you just need like, God, I need, I need a confirmation. I need you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because I've I felt that before. So let's continue to read. And it happened just that way. When he got up the next morning, he pressed the fleece together and wrung out a whole bowl full of water. So the Lord had did exactly what he had asked for. Then Gideon said to the Lord, please, look, 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 God, please don't be angry with me. But, but let me make one, one more little test. This time, let the fleas remain dry while the ground around is wet. So the Lord did as he asked. The night the fleas stayed dry, but the ground was covered with dew. So in other words, when we have to ask God for extra signs is an indication of doubt and unbelief. And what happens is fear often makes us wait for more confirmation when we should be taking action. This is why doubt is, is, is terrible because doubt is distraction from you doing what you were supposed to do in that moment. Don't let a fleece become a substitute for God's wisdom that comes through the word of God in prayer. If God told you something, you need to have the confidence to do it. And if you do not have the confidence to do it, get into his word. Let me tell you, every time I get into the word of God, even if I, I read a story that seems not relevant to my current life, somehow, some way, I leave out of that time refreshed, renewed, strengthened. This is why we need to get into the Bible. Amen. The Bible is what strengthens us. It's not wrong to ask a sign every now and then, but don't be like, God, 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 because when we get, when we know God, we have confidence in him. So don't focus on limitation and weakness, because when we, when we do that, we fail to see how God, with his all-powerful and limitless, can work through us. Don't spend time making excuses when you can use that time to do what God wants you to do. Don't pay so much attention to your limitations. Well, I'm not qualified. I'm not good looking enough. Whatever your excuse is. Look, let me tell you, that is not an excuse, okay? You are wonderfully made. God has a purpose for your life. Instead of looking at your lack of what you don't have, focus your eyes on what everything that God is. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us continue. We're in chapter 7. This is going to get good, people. I hope you guys are receiving, amen? Amen. So Gideon and his army got up early, had an early start and went as far as the spring of Herod. The armies of Midian were encamped north of them down in the valley beside the hill of Moreh. The Lord said to Gideon, Look, 
there are too many of you, okay? I can't let all of you fight the Midianites. For then, then the people of Israel will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. Send home all of your men who are timid and frightened. Okay? So 22,000. Oh yeah, this is not one, two, three people. This is 22,000 of them left. So imagine how much more were there in the first place, okay? A lot of people were uh, apparently timid and frightened. And only 10,000 remained who were willing to fight. But then the Lord told Gideon, look, look, look. There's still too many, okay? I'm sorry, but like bring them down to the spring and I'll show you which ones go with you and which ones shall not. So Gideon did as the Lord said. They brought them to the water and they divided them into two groups by the way that they drink. So group number one will all be the men who cup the water in their hands to, to, to drink from their mouths and lap it like a dog, okay? And group two will be those who kneel at the river or the, the water with their mouths in the stream. So only 300 of the men who drank from their hands and all the others drank with their mouths to the stream. I'll conquer the Midianites with these 300. So imagine, <laughs> over, over maybe like, I don't know, thousands and thousands and thousands of men, God narrowed it down to only 300. So compare that to those numbers. That is a sad number, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. But that's how it was. Look, the Lord said, send the others home. These are the 300 men that I'm going to use. So after Gideon had collected all the, tray, the clay jars and the trumpets that they had among them, he sat them home, leaving only 300 men with him. Hallelujah. The reason why God had to reduce the size of the soldiers is because he said, look, if, if you come in with all these people, they're going to say, oh, <laughs> we got we got lucky, okay? It was, you see that there? That's what killed the um, Midianite army. It was no God. It was no nothing. God was like, look, we're not having that here. We're going we're gonna to reduce the size, and I'm going to get the glory so that people know that the purpose that I have called you, Gideon, is because of the purpose that I have for these people. Amen? So self-sufficiency is an enemy when it causes us to believe that, that we can do things on our own strength. Well, God told me I can be a singer. I'm going to do things on my own strength the way that I think I need to be. And you know what's so, so messed up? That when we start to do things on our own strength, and even with good intentions, I'm going to be a singer, and I do that on my own strength, I can actually put myself at risk of taking the glory and then going on my own purpose. Jesus. Wow. The minute that you think you can do this on your own is the minute that you have failed. Because the purpose that was given to you by God is no longer the one who is guiding your life to get there. Do not think preach, that you can preach. do this on your own. Preach. So you can get the glory. So that people can look at you. It is not our glory. If I sing good, if I, if I give a good preaching, let me make it clear. It is not me. I am not capable for that. If there's any good in me, it's because it's God. God gets the glory. I do not touch the glory. And let me tell you, whatever God wants to do in your life, do not, do not become self-sufficient. Don't think that you can do it on your own string because you can't. And even if you do success, God is not there to back you up because he says it's not by might or not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. If you are not operate, operating by the spirit of God, whose spirit are you operating by? Amen. Ay, ay, I feel Jesus. So, 300 men, remember that. So during the night, with the Midianites encamped in the valley just below, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, take your troops and attack the Midianites, for I will cause you to defeat, to defeat them. Imagine, like, you're, <laughs> just imagine, you're like, you know, chilling in your tent, you know, you're, you're you know, you're minding your own business, you know, everything is, it's not time yet. And then all of a sudden the Lord says, Hey! It's time. Go, 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 go. Like, I would be like, my heart would be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'll be freaking out. But the Lord was like, hey, go, go, go. So imagine Gideon is probably like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And he's like, the Lord's saying, I will cause you to defeat them. But if you are afraid, which he was, because obviously God wouldn't have said if you were afraid if he wasn't afraid, okay? <laughs> First, go down to the camp alone. Take along your servant, Pura, if you like. And listen to what they are saying down there. You will be greatly encouraged and eager to attack. 
So, what does Gideon do? He obeys the Lord. So he took his his little <laughs> his, his partner, Pura, and crept down through the darkness. So this is in the middle of the night. Crept down in the darkness in the middle of the night to the outpost of the enemy's camp. The vast armies of Midian. Look, look how they describe this, okay? Put like this, put this in your mind, like a mental image. So the vast armies of Midian. Amalek and the other nations, this is not just Midian, this is all the other nations that came in together to come against the Israelites. All the other nations of the east were crowded across the valley like locusts. I don't know if you guys have ever seen an invasion of locusts. It is ridiculous. It's disgusting. It's You can't even see the floor, how much they're just like, <laughs> Google it. That thing is trippy. Yes, like the sand upon the seashore. Let me tell you, if you go to the, the sand, how much little beads does that take? That's a lot, okay? Okay, and there were too many camels even to count. So if you have a problem counting camels, that means that there's a lot of camels. <laughs> so Gideon crept up to one of the tents just as a man inside had walked, awakened from a nightmare and was telling his tent mate about it. So this guy, he's, he's in, in the enemy's camp, and he just like, he was like, oh my God, bro, I just had this crazy dream. And, and Gideon just so happens to walk in that, like at the right time, because he's in purpose, okay? At the right time to witness what he's about to say. So the guy's like, oh my God, man, I had this crazy dream, and, and there was like this, this huge loaf of barley bread that was tumbling down into our camp, and then it hit our tent and knocked it flat. Like, that was a crazy dream, right? And then the other soldier replied, your dream can only mean one thing. Gideon, the son of Joash, the Israeli, is going to come and massacre all the allied forces of Midian. I want to know something. How does that guy get an interpretation about a bread rolling down the wind, the hill to knock down a tent flat? He gets his, his great his great dream interpretation that specifically Gideon, out of all the people in the Israelite you know group clan, is gonna come and massacre all of the neighboring um, forces against all. Oh, I don't know. It's like that was some crazy. <laughs> that's how you know God was involved to give him that interpretation. So, <laughs> so all that to say is that God can use the enemy to give you the confidence you need to walk into your divine purpose. Amen, amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. If you didn't hear that, let me just repeat that to you again so you can get fired up. God can use the enemy to give you the confidence that you need to walk into his purpose. Let me tell you, the enemy can detect your plan and, and, and God's calling on your life. He can detect it. Let me tell you, he detected mom's calling in her life by trying to, to, to kill her, literally, tried to kill my dad, tried to kill me. Actually, he did kill, and I came back because when you're in purpose, nothing can shake you. So the enemy can even be used by God to give you the encouragement and the ammunition you need to swing right at him. Woo! Amen. You can either become discouraged, or you could be like, oh, look at the, the nations. They're all like, gang. Look, 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 look how many camels there are. Look, look, Gideon could have been tripping out. Like, oh, I don't even want to, I don't want to look, I don't want to look. This, this is too over, overwhelming. Because if we were looking at what he's saying here, the description of how that those armies look, and he's only with 300 men, bro, he, he, he was like probably tripping out. But no, he stuck to the plan. And he used that dream from the enemy to get him fired up to know that if God is for me, who can be against me? Amen. So don't let the enemy discourage you. Let me tell you, if the enemy is all up on your, your case and at your throat, let me tell you, he's just saying, I hate you because you know what? You're walking in your purpose and I can't do nothing about it. Woo. Jesus. Yay. 
Look, if, if the enemy has all that effort to, to join allies and, and to come together and, and look all bad and big, let me tell you, there is something big and great and mighty in your life that God wants to do. So let me tell you right now, do not focus on the numbers. Don't look at the odds. Don't look at your 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 your, your bank account and how I, I'm supposed to birth this, this thing and I only have two pennies. It doesn't matter what it looks like. If God said you are going to go, you are gonna go if God says move to the left you move to the left it doesn't matter what it looks like or how, how hard it may seem it doesn't matter the odds if Jesus said you are gonna do it you are gonna do it it is not by might not by power but by his spirit let me tell you if the Lord said you were gonna be a teacher it doesn't matter if you didn't go to college you're gonna be a teacher oh if the Lord said you were gonna break down books you are gonna be an author change the nations if he said it you will do it hallelujah jesus jesus we just get one little resistance and we want to give up god is not looking for people who are who are willing to give up ask your signs that gideon had to but keep pressing on keep saying god i'm here i'm available if god told you you will do it you will do it hallelujah he will use even the enemy to tell you that he is going to do his calling we're getting to the end okay don't get all sleepy on me hallelujah i just get so fired up so the guy just finished talking about the dream and they're like gladly they replied and spread out a sheet for everyone to throw in the gold earrings that they had gathered their value was estimated twenty-five thousand, not including the crescents and the pedants or the royal clothing of the kings or the chains around the camel's necks. Gideon made an ephod from the gold and put it in Ophrah, his hometown, but all Israel soon began worshiping it. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Sorry, I am so sorry. I I, I, was, I was like that doesn't make any sense, but it's because I skipped two pages. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. Okay. So, oh my gosh, oh, that threw me off big time. Okay, so when Gideon heard the dream and the interpretation, okay, there you go. When Gideon heard the dream and the interpretation, so he just heard the crazy interpretation from the bread falling off the hill, then he turned to his men and shouted, Get up, for the Lord is going to use you to conquer all these vast armies of Midian. And you know what he it says here? As soon as he heard the interpretation, all he could do was just stand there and worship God. Jesus, let me tell you, when God confirms and, and, and suits you up for the battle that you're about Jesus. to fight, all you can do is just sit there and worship God because it's not you who's going to go out there and fight the battle. It's God who's going to fight the battle. And so just, all you got to do is just say thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because Jesus is going to fight this battle. That's why I am so passionate with worship because we think it's just songs and songs, but basically we're saying we're worshiping you because I don't got nothing to worry about. He took me out of my drama. He took me out of my, my problems. And all I have to do is sit here and worship you. Look, watch what happens. So he divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a trumpet and a clay jar with a torch in it. Then he explained his plan. This is his plan. When we arrive at the outer guard post of the camp, he took them, do, he told them, look, do just as I do. As soon as I and the men in my group blow our trumpets, you blow yours on sides of the camp and shout, we fight for God and for Gideon. It was just after midnight and the change of guards when Gideon and the hundred men with him crept into the outer edge of the camp of Midian. Suddenly they blew their trumpets and broke their clay jars so that their torches blaze into the night. <laughs> then the other 200 of his men did the same, blowing the trumpets in their right hands and holding the flaming torches in their left hands and yelling, for the Lord and for Gideon. Then they just stood and watched as though, listen, after they followed Gideon's instructions, they just stood and watched as the whole vast army began rushing around in a panic, 
shouting and running away. For in confusion, the Lord caused the enemy troops to begin fighting and killing each other from one end of the camp to the other. And they fled into the night into places as far as as Blugurugugu and Dugudugu. All that to say, <laughs> let me tell you, Gideon thought he was gonna go over there and start going, ha, yeah, yeah. No, all he did was say, for the Lord and for Gideon. And as soon as they shouted in victory, ha, <laughs> the enemy had no choice but to get to com get confused and they just started killing each other. <laughs> all that to say is that you don't gotta fight any of your battles. If God says, go, you will defeat them. You don't gotta do any swinging. You don't gotta be trained. You don't gotta do none of that. All you gotta do is worship him and be in obedience and your purpose walk into your purpose. We're talking about a guy who said he was the weakest and his clan. We're talking about a guy who tore down the idols and had to face the people, his own people in his face. Sometimes you're gonna have to deal with people who you thought were gonna support you and, 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 and ride and die with you for your whole life. Sometimes you have to deal with people who, who you care about and, and, and have them just destroy you. But you know what? All the things that they did could not destroy Gideon because he said, I'm gonna walk into my purpose. I don't care how ugly it gets. I don't care what how crazy it gets. If God said it, he will do it. He will do it. He will do it. Too many of us are like, the devil, the devil, the devil. Let me tell you, when you're in purpose, the devil don't got no power over you. He cannot touch you. He cannot touch you. He cannot touch you. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, oh, God is going to turn it for good. I don't care if you almost died. God is going to bring you back because if you have a calling and purpose, death cannot take you out prematurely if you have a calling in your life. Let me tell you, God has a purpose in your life. Get fired up because you don't got to be fancy and schmancy when God says you're going to do something. It's not for you. It's for him, for his glory. Because Gideon followed and obeyed what God said. Not only was he able to defeat the Midianites, but all these other enemy nations that, that were surrounding him because he did one simple thing. He walked in purpose and he obeyed what the purpose had in store for him. You can imagine, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but <laughs> homeboy comes home and he has the trophy like, ooh, 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 and he's like giving God the glory. And all these people that thought he was weak, that he was no good for nothing, all of a sudden they're like, be my king, come on, we'll, we'll, we'll worship you, do whatever, come on, come on. Let me tell you, we're talking about a nation that wanted want nothing to do with God. All of a sudden, because of Gideon's obedience, they're like, let us serve your God. Let me tell you, the most selfish thing you can do is live for yourself. Because when you walk in purpose, all the people around you, the people that you thought were going to hate you or for doing what you did in God's purpose, they're going to be like, what do you got? I need your God. I need purpose in my life. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Gideon left a legacy and impact on the people around him. That he encouraged them to walk into their purpose that God is, has given them. He encouraged them to do the right thing. Don't be, don't be discouraged when everybody else doesn't want to do the right thing. If God said do the right thing, it's because he wants to use you to help others get into the right thing themselves. Because God has a purpose for them too. Oh. God is no, he has no specialties. He doesn't favor just one purpose. If you are human, you have a purpose. If you're breathing, he has a purpose for you. Don't withhold yourself from walking into your purpose. Stop saying, well, I don't know, but I don't know the right words. I don't, I don't have the right materials. Let me tell you, just do it. Just walk in obedience and watch God do what he needs to do. You don't even gotta fight. All you have to do is obey. Awesome. There are people out there who are hurting. They are hurting. And because if when you walk in your purpose, you God's power through you has the power. Oh Rabashaya. Get this, get this. Because you did what you had to do and walked in your purpose, you have the power to help others to get into their purpose as well. But let me tell you, not only that. When people see great things coming out of you, 
they will know it's God. Because if people saw that Gideon defeated the army with over 22,000 people, they wouldn't probably look to God. But because they saw that it was only 300 against an infinite amount of people, they knew that was not, that was not Gideon. That was a higher power. That was our God. There are people that, that know of God and have slipped away and are living, living uh, you know, how the, the, enemy, the, the enemy's purpose, because that was one of them. There are so many people that are lost out of there. And, and, and as soon as they see what, what God can do in your life, you will awaken. You will awaken. Harabashaya, get this. You will awaken those who know God and have left him. Harabashaya. When you walk into your purpose, people who, who have stepped away from God will be remembered. Why? Who is it that their God is and who made them? They will, they will come to themselves like the prodigal son because they see the glory of God. Only God can do something like that. I need God in my life. Who are you inspiring to do great and mighty things for God? Woo! How can we inspire people to do great and things? How can we inspire people when we're not able to do what we need to do? Let me tell you, there was no miracles, there was no signs, there was no wonders because the people were living how they wanted to do, living in their own purpose, serving idols, wasting their times. But the minute that, that God obeyed and walked in his purpose, the supernatural happened. Come on, we need the supernatural in our church because we're trying to do things in our own way. We replace the, the presence of God with entertainment. I don't care if I look crazy. I want the move of God up in this place. If, 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 people, if people in this, this nation need to know that God is real, let them know through our sincere, our, our obedience and us walking in our purpose. That's right. That's right. A lot of people will never know what God is because we're not showing him who he is. Mm. Because we're too busy. I did this. I know what I'm doing with my life. I need to be successful. I need to do things my way. You need to wake up because what you're on is on the plan of the enemy. Stop letting the enemy mess with your head. We're coming to a time where the time is becoming very, very, very limited. Now is the time where we need to, 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 to come on our knees, turn to God in repentance and say, God, I'm sorry for doing things the way that I thought that they needed to be. I'm sorry for being selfish. I want to walk in your purpose for my life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, even the enemies who come against you will bow to the God that you serve because they know they know who God is in you. That's right. That's right. Let me oh tell you. Lord. Stop wasting your time. Get angry. Get fired up. I hope that this, this preaching made you want to just like, I need to get in my purpose. Everybody get out of my way. Nobody's going to stop me. Enemy, let me tell you, there's nothing holding you back. The only thing that's holding you back is you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Boom. So get back, get back into the game. Take back your territory. All these Midianites that come against you and want to uh, intimidate you. No. God gave me this land. God gave me this purpose. God, God gave me this. So if God gave me this, God will give me the power to take it back. Everything that the enemy has taken away from you, your identity, your power. Oh, Rabbi stop being insecure. If God has given you the confidence, take your confidence back in the name of Jesus. Do what God has called you to do. Get angry. Take your purpose and your destiny back. Jesus, I encourage you, take it back. Take it back. This is your time. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Because right now, as I speak, Father God, there are people who are, who are, who are hungry for you, Jesus, and are tired of living a life without meaning, Father God, who are just letting life just take the best out of them, wasting time, wasting time living in the same thing, God. I pray, Father God, that you will awaken us, Father God, that you will awaken us to our purpose and our plan that you have given us, Lord, so we can be effective in the kingdom of God. Oh, Lord, let our purpose, Father God, bring about revival in our lives, in our families, in our country, in our nation. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now, Father God, that your will be done, Lord, as it is in heaven. Father God, as it is in heaven, Lord, in our lives, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Woo! Fire! Man. Man, I was sitting back there, I was like, ooh. About the presence of the Lord. I hope you guys received something 
today because I know I received something. I was thinking about, I was thinking about the, about whew, purpose, you know what I mean? And, and I was thinking about my daughter. I'm like, God had a purpose for her to be born even. You understand what I'm saying? God had a purpose for me to go to New York to find my wife, for us to have a little girl like this. She's not little, she's a lady already, but with that fire and that intensity, who thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe, you know, you're out there today and you're like, wow, you know, you know, I'm going through a whole lot of stuff, you know, and, and what about my purpose? Hey, your purpose is there. You have a purpose. You have a plan and a purpose. And God wants to move you in that right direction today. And I don't need to add not one word to this message. But I just need to tell you today, get up. Get up. It's time to get up and get moving. You understand what I'm saying? Stop doubting God. Stop doubting Him. Stop doubting Him. Oh, I'm sick. Today, we're going to pray. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and, and out of the blues, he calls me, and, and he starts talking to me about, you know, his girl that is, that is going through some stuff right now. And I said, you know, we're going to pray that the Lord heals her. And if you're going through any sickness, any disease, right now, I tell you, in the name of Jesus, you are healed. You are healed. This young lady is healed. Today, in Jesus' name, you have arthritis. It's time for your healing. You have kidney stones. It's time for your healing. Amen. You have, you're going through something in your life right now that you don't see the other side. It's time for your healing. God is healing your life right now, healing your family, healing that situation that you're going through right now in the name of Jesus. Just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my healing. Like, like, like he was saying, you know, what did Gideon do? Gideon didn't do nothing but raise his hand and praise the Lord. Praise your hand. Lift, lift your hands right now and praise the Lord and say, I am healed. I am healed in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. who hallelujah. So receive this message. Receive it. Take it for yourself and say, I am going to receive this and I am going to walk out my purpose in my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. Until next week, you know, whatever the Lord wants to do, I don't have no control. This is God's, this is God. This is God's this is this church is God's church and whoever is going to stand up here next week is going to be a God thing. Hallelujah. So be blessed. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful Sunday and in the name of Jesus give him praise and glory in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah.